What's up everybody? Welcome back. This is Jay from Make Your Own Lifestyle Lab and today I would like to talk about a way of losing body fat. What if I told you that you can lose body fat from eating foods? Too good to be true? You're probably right. It's actually scientifically called diet induced thermogenesis. So stay tuned and let's talk about what it is and how this information can help you lose weight. And yes, there'll be references and resources and I'll leave them down in the description box so you can look it up if you'd like to know more. Diet induced thermogenesis is burning body fat or expending calories by eating and digesting food. One study concluded that 5 to 15% of the foods are spent just on digestion. Did you hear what I just said? We spend 5 to 15% of total calories that we eat per day on processing and digesting what we eat. Now basically what that is is that the amount of energy expenditure above the basal metabolic rate due to the cost of processing food for use and storage. The easy example would be, and if you've tried some type of diet, I mean who hasn't, you've probably heard that it takes more calories to burn than the calories you gain from eating a stick of celery. Now I don't mean you should eat anything to trigger diet induced thermogenesis to lose weight, obviously. The three macronutrients have different thermogenic effect levels, meaning carb, protein, and fat all have different digestion rate and thus different level of thermogenic effect from digestion. And there's more. Certain foods are known to trigger higher thermogenic effect for your body, so if you're serious about burning body fat, you should definitely add them to your meals. And I'll give you the list later in this video, so stay tuned. So let's get started. There are three factors that play into our total daily energy expenditure. Your basal metabolic rate or BMR, physical activities such as non-exercise activities, thermogenesis and exercise, and then there's TEF, the thermal effect of feeding. What we're looking at today is mainly the TEF. As you can see in the pyramid, TEF plays a relatively small role in total daily energy expenditure, but remember, the key point here is that when we eat foods and the food is being digested, it is over a period of real-time hours and this can be viewed as diet-induced thermogenic state. When we're in a thermogenic state, our body enters an anabolic state. Anabolism centers around growth and building where you can build muscle mass and it must consume energy. Why is this important? Through anabolism from thermogenic effect ensures that you're exercising and building muscle from the foods you eat. I mean, who doesn't want to lose weight and gain muscles? According to a study on diet-induced thermogenesis, the thermogenesis begins approximately one hour after we feed and reaches its maximum after three hours. Now, doesn't this sound familiar? This is why a lot of healthy enthusiasts eat six to seven small meals every three to four hours throughout the day. Think of it this way, when you wake up in the morning and you're on an empty stomach, you're now in a catabolic state which is the opposite of anabolic where your body is expanding stored muscles and glucose for your activities. Let's say a catabolic state is a campfire ready to be burned. When you have a meal, and I should say healthy foods, you've just poured gasoline to the firewood and ignited it. Now I know that a lot of you skip breakfast because you're running late for work or school and eat huge lunch instead. But think about the campfire. When you just start a fire, it'll burn intensely for a while but soon it'll slowly die out. So does your thermogenic effects and being in an anabolic state. To make sure that the fire is consistently burning, you have to feed firewood every so often. Now this makes sense as to why you should eat frequent small meals throughout the day instead of the traditional three if you're trying to lose weight and exercising. But not all macros induce the same level of thermogenesis. Studies have shown that as you can see on your screen, carbs trigger about 5 to 15%, fat triggers about 5 to 10, and protein triggers 20 to 30%. Meaning when you eat 100 calories from each three macros, carb will burn on average 10 calories, fat will burn about 7.5, and protein will burn 25 calories. As you can see here, when it comes to diet-induced thermogenesis and its macros, protein is the winner. Now you can take this information and get much more mileage out of diet-induced thermogenesis from eating higher protein diet. Let's say it takes you 3,000 calories per day to remain the same weight. Out of that 3,000 calories, your macros were spread out as 50% carb, 
30% protein and 20% fat. But if you consume the same number of calories but instead change your macros to 35% carb, 45% protein and 20% fat, you are triggering higher diet-induced thermogenesis and will slowly begin to lose weight even though you're eating the same amount of calories. Make sense? Now you can organize your daily caloric intake throughout the day based on DIT, but there are different factors that should be considered. Remember, your body or digestive system prefers liquid source than the solid food. And I'm not saying liquid form of nutrition is better than solid, and I always prefer solid food than liquidated or supplements, but consider this. A vegetable juice has most of the nutrition that you can get from eating a solid vegetable, but it's more condensed, thus higher calories but digests faster, so it triggers less thermogenic effects than eating a solid vegetable. Eating a solid vegetable may not have the equal amount of calories than juice, but it contains fiber, which makes it harder or longer for your digestive system, and thus higher level of diet-induced thermogenesis. Make sense? I'll prepare a whole nother video just on calorie organization next time, so make sure to come back and check it out. So finally, let's talk about foods that naturally have thermogenic effect. Fibrous vegetables, like I've just mentioned, is one of them, and solid proteins such as breast of poultry meats, eggs, and fatty fish that have high omega-3 level are also great. And cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper contains capsaicin, which is a thermogenic chemical and is actually can be found in other peppers as well. And along with peppers, other spices such as turmeric, ginger are also great, and green tea, MCT oil, coffee, and olive oil are all known to have great thermogenic effect on your bodies, so make sure to add them to your meals if DIT sounds like a plan for you. Obviously, to lose weight, you must eat less calories than your total daily energy expenditure. But from maintaining a disciplined caloric intake, make sure to increase the percent of protein if you like to benefit from diet-induced thermogenesis. Next time, I'll cover how to maintain your calories throughout the day based on your preferences and daily schedules, so be sure to come back and check it out. What did you think about diet-induced thermogenesis? Comment down below what you think and we'd love to hear from all of you. And if you have any questions or suggestions, also leave a comment and I'll stay in touch with all of you. Thanks for watching guys and this was Jay from Make Your Own Lifestyle Lab. And if you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button and share with your friends. And make sure to subscribe to our channel for more tips on health, nutrition, psychology and exercise. I'll visit you next time with more videos on healthy lifestyle information. See you next time and stay fit, stay cool, and stay motivated. Make your own lifestyle lab.